Hi everyone, welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, a series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today, we'll take a look at the game with a heavy box called Claustrophobia 1643. Claustrophobia is a game for two players. One of them will play the human side and the other player will be the infernal player. First of all, select the scenario from the scenario book. In the description, you will find which human and infernal warriors will be in play. You will also find the layout of the tiles, victory conditions and any special rules for the scenario, together with some special tokens that you will need. So for each depicted warrior, the human player will take the corresponding warrior board one tablet and the miniature. If the warrior has any gifts, place the gift tokens into the corresponding slots. If the warrior has any equipment, find the equipment in the deck and place the equipment card next to the warrior board. Now take one activation die for each warrior and shuffle the deck of instinct cards. The infernal player will also prepare his warriors especially the demon specified by the scenario, then the hellhound, and he will also prepare the board of destiny, place six destiny dice into this dice pool, and take the number of threat points determined by the scenario. Small gems are worth one threat point, and large gems are worth three threat points. Make sure you have the tough troglodyte board somewhere nearby, and finally shuffle the event deck. Prepare the starting layout of the tiles as per the scenario description and you're ready to go. Claustrophobia is played in turns. Each turn has five phases. First phase is a human preparation phase where human player rolls dice. Then he needs to allocate these dice to all his warriors. The die value will determine which line will be activated and the line will determine the statistics like movement, attack and defense and any special abilities that the warrior will have for the upcoming turn. Then in the activation phase, human warriors will move, explore new tiles, combat and perform other actions. Then it's infernal player's preparation phase and again he will roll three dice from his dice pool and similar to human player, he will assign those dice to these destiny powers or demon power or on a hellhounds if they're in play already. Then in a threat phase, infernal player will spend these threat points to bring his demonic forces into play. Finally, in the activation phase, his demonic warriors will move combat and perform other actions on the game board. The game will continue until some of the victory conditions will be met. At the beginning of the human preparation phase, take as many activation dice as you have active warriors. Then roll all those dice and assign one die to each warrior. You can see the corresponding symbols in these slots, so the die with the value 1 goes into the top row, while the die with the value 6 goes into the bottom row. Die placement determines the statistics and any gifts of that warrior for the upcoming turn. Statistics include movement, attack, defense, and if the die is placed into a row with some special gifts, you can activate those gifts. You can find the description of all gifts in the rulebook. If you activate a line with this symbol, for each activated symbol, you can draw one instinct card. You cannot use them now, they will be available next turn. At any time during the game, you can only have as many instinct cards in your hand as the number of human warriors at the start of the game. If you would draw some additional instinct cards, simply discard some of them to the maximum hand size limit. In the subsequent turns, after you roll and assign your dice, you can assign maximum one instinct card to each warrior. 
Each instinct card has two effects. You can either choose to apply the effect of the card and it will last one turn, or you may decide to use this number and then change the die value to this value. So I can make this 4 down to 3. When you use the instinct card to change the value of a die, the instinct card is immediately discarded. When the warrior gets damaged, he will get these damage markers. If you need to assign a die to the line which has this damage token, and you don't have suitable instinct cards to change the value of that die, the warrior will become exhausted. Take this exhausted token and place it over that activated line, and this token will change the statistics of the warrior. Warrior will not be able to use his talents, his gifts or abilities, but he can still benefit from any other special tokens. If he would have any equipment, that equipment would be also unavailable. However, if still in the preparation phase, some of the healing effects would cause this damage marker to be removed. This activation line will become active again, so the exhausted token will be removed. Equipment becomes available again. Warrior can use his talents and even take the instinct card. So, to summarize the human preparation phase. First of all, discard all the instinct cards played in previous turns. Then discard all exhausted tokens and any other tokens and take all activation dice. Finally, roll those dice and assign them to the warriors. Remember, you roll as many dice as you have active warriors. So if one of the warriors would die, you can only roll three activation dice. In the activation phase, a human player activates all his warriors one by one. He needs to fully resolve the activation of one warrior before he moves to the activation of another warrior. Each warrior can move and perform action. They can either perform an action like combat and then move, or they can move first and then perform an action. It is not allowed to move perform an action and move again. Both movement and action are optional. An action can be a combat or scenario action or equipment action. Before we move on to the infernal player's phases, we will first explain how movement and combat works. Warriors can move from one tile to orthogonally adjacent tile through these openings. For one movement point, warrior can move one tile. The number in the corner of each tile determines the occupation limit. It determines the maximum number of warriors of each faction that can be present on a tile. Basically, each player can only have three warriors on this tile. Next, there is a blocking rule. The player can only move his warrior from a tile to another tile if the number of his warriors is equal or higher than the number of enemy warriors. So in this situation, this warrior can move away, but now a human player only has one warrior and there are two enemy warriors, so this warrior cannot move. The only exception is this elusive talent, which is explained in the rulebook as all other talents. Then for one movement point, a human player can explore new tile, and only the human player can do it. Take the top tile from the tile deck and then Inferno player has to decide on the orientation of the new tile. The tile must be passable. These endings are just a decoration endings and the Inferno player cannot place the tile like this. But it's up to him which other way he would do it. Then the human player can move on to the new tile. If this warrior would have any additional movement points remaining, he can continue moving and potentially exploring another tile. If the new tile has any special ability or a special symbol here, such tile would have some special rules associated with it. Again, for the description of all those tiles, please look into the rulebook. In a very special situation, 
if you would explore a new tile and this tile would be a dead end and there would be no other unexplored openings you have to discard this tile and draw a new one which cannot be a dead end warriors can attack enemy warriors if they are on the same tile because warriors are activated one by one there's always only one warrior attacking first he has to choose the target he can attack the demon hellhound or a troglodyte and if there are multiple troglodytes on the same tile he can attack all of them with one combat action on the other hand infernal warrior has to choose which human warrior he would attack so let's say this redeemer attacks the hellhound looking at the redeemer's activation line his attack value is three that means he will roll three dice the hellhound's basic defense is four if the value of the combat die is equal or greater than the defense value the attacker scores a hit in this case both the die with the value 4 and 5 produce a hit school symbol is always a hit for 2 damage inflicted the hellhound would receive 2 damage tokens if later in the game he would receive the third damage token the hellhound would be killed and the miniature would be completely removed from the game similarly hits against demons are also marked with the damage tokens however if the demon is killed for the first time the miniature is removed from the board and placed into the infernal player's reserve only if the demon is killed for the second time it will be completely removed from the game if you attack troglodytes who have the defense value 3 and you would produce multiple hits because the troglodytes only have one hit point for each hit one troglodyte is killed all troglodytes are placed into the infernal player's reserve if the infernal player attacks a human warrior and produces some hits for each hit a human player must assign one damage token to one of the open slots if he decides to put it into the line which is activated by the activation die his human warrior does not become exhausted that can only happen during the human preparation phase if the human warrior would receive the final sixth damage token he would be killed his miniature is removed from the game together with his game board and the activation die At the beginning of the infernal preparation phase the infernal player has to roll three destiny dice from this dice pool then he needs to assign those dice to one of these six destiny powers or to the demon power or to the hellhound special ability if the hellhound is already in play each power has two rows top row and the bottom row when you place a die you always place it into the top row called preparation row you may assign the dice any way you want you can even assign them and use the power of the demon even if the demon is not in play yet then if the conditions of those powers are fulfilled the power will be triggered move the dice to the trigger spaces which is the bottom row of each power if the trigger condition is not fulfilled leave the dice in the preparation row again you can find the description of the destiny powers in the rulebook but i will briefly mention two of them this abyssal thread gives you three thread points for each die that you have here and with the dark destiny you can draw event cards you can have maximum four cards in your hand and if you would draw another one simply discard down to four the text on the cards indicates when and how you can use them so during the subsequent turns at the beginning of the infernal preparation phase first discard all the event cards played in the previous turn then move all dice from the triggered spaces from the bottom rows to the dice pool and leave all dice in the preparation rows intact then take three dice from the dice pool and roll them 
Remember, you must always roll three dice. So if you don't have enough dice in your dice pool, you have to take some of the dice from the preparation places. During the threat phase, the infernal player can bring his demonic creatures into play. To do that, he need to spend certain amount of threat points. To bring one troglodyte into play, he needs to spend one threat point. For a hellhound, he needs to spend three threat points. And he would need five threat points to bring demon into play. So if you have enough threat points, you can bring multiple creatures into play. Then you need to choose a suitable tile. First, the tile cannot contain enemy warriors. It has to be empty or contain other infernal creatures. Second, the tile has to have some unexplored openings. So even if this tile would be empty, there are no unexplored openings and you would not be able to bring your creatures here. Finally, each tile has the occupation limit. So even though this tile is empty and has the unexplored opening, the infernal player can only bring one creature into play through this tile. This tile can contain three creatures of one faction, so the infernal player can bring two more creatures into play. When you bring a hellhound into play, make sure you have one die available in the dice pool. You can use that die, choose any face you want and activate the hellhound's power. The infernal activation phase works in the same way as the human activation phase. So the infernal creatures can now move and then take an action, or they can take an action and move. Both options are optional, and each warrior has to be activated one by one, exactly as during the human activation phase. The game then continues with the next turn and many other subsequent turns, until some of these victory conditions are fulfilled. The game can also end up with a draw. So that's how you play Claustrophobia 1643. If this is your first experience with the Claustrophobia, you will probably need to look into the rulebook quite often because there's just so many powers and symbols and special abilities and gifts and talents. And if you have any questions or comments, just please ask them in the comment sections. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you like the show, I'll be happy if you would subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec, you've been watching Game in a Nutshell. Hope to see you next time.